All right, good morning. Uh, it's been quite the morning. It snowed out there, so it's icy. I got all the way to school and I forgot my daughter's lunch. So it's like now I forgot the lunch. So <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. And then I couldn't find my phone, so I was just looking for my phone. So I can text her and be like, I guess I'm bringing, I don't know. I've got a class after this too, so lunchtime got busted today. It's sitting on the counter. It's like, ah, the lunch is sitting on the counter. <laughs> Not how good it does us now after we drove all the way here. And I just got back, so. Yeah, and then I was driving it and then we get all the way there. I'm like, success. And then it's like, where's your lunch? I'm like, damn it. <laughs> so to make myself feel better, let's do a bunch of math, I guess. Recall last time we were doing trigonometric integrals. What we want to know from this is we have three main categories and then in each one we have all these cases. So the three main categories are one, We've got integral of sine nx and cos mx dx when they're odd and even powers. And then there's four cases. For the first three cases, we use uh, the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one and we steal one of the odd powers in the case four. We use, all these cases are in the previous lecture notes, but in case four, we use the identities sine squared x equals one half one minus cos two x and cos squared x equals one half one plus cos two x. In the second case, which I'll discuss today a little bit, and then the third case and the third case are awfully similar. This is going to be integrals of tan nx and secant mx dx. I went through these last time too. I just barely finished these ones last time and did a reduction of order formula. So I'll start with there again. And then we have integral of cotan nx and cosecant mx dx. These are awfully similar. The techniques are the same because their derivatives are similar. We have, in this case, we're looking for the derivative with respect to x of tan x is secant squared x. and the derivative with respect to x of secant x is secant 10. And similarly here, the derivative with respect to x of cotan x is just negative cosecant squared x. And that's why this, the techniques are awfully similar. But the derivative with respect to x of Cosecant x is negative cosecant x, cotan x. So the techniques of two and three are identical. I focus on one and two, the techniques of one and two, because this is when we do trigonometric substitution of getting rid of the square root of one minus x squared or one plus x squared, et cetera. It'll turn into sines and cosines or tans and secants usually. And so this will get us out of there in most cases. All right, so for the last case, when we want to do this, for cases two and three, what we're essentially doing is, well, that would be a three. We use differentials. D 
uh, we're going to use dw is either equal to uh, secant squared x dx. And so that w is going to be what? We want to make our substitution tan x. Or we want to use a differential. We see we can steal a differential, but now we have to steal for secant. We have to steal one from secant and one from tan. When we steal, do that secant, we're going to make the substitution. So it didn't matter what his power was, but tan, we need to steal one. So we need to get rid of the rest of the tan. So tan must be odd in this case. So when we have dw is going to be secant x tan x dx, we know that our w is going to be secant x. And this is what we have to steal. The differentials are essentially what we have to steal from one of the tans or secants. So we have four subcases. If tan is odd, this is good. Why is this good? Because then we get, <clears throat> we can have the integral of tan 2k plus 1x secant mx dx is equal to integral of tan squared to the k times secant x to the m minus 1. And then I have a secant x tan x. I've stole one from both. And then I turn all the tans into secants. Tan is secant squared x minus one to the power k times secant m minus one times secant x tan x dx. And now I make my substitution. This is dw. And so secant is going to be w. So this is going to be the integral of w squared minus one to the power k, w to the m minus one dw. And then we're off to the races. So when you have an odd power, this is good. When you have an even secant, this is also good. If you have an even power, then this is good because then what you're going to do is steal two of them. Secant 2Lx is going to equal secant 2L plus 2 minus 2. I'm just going to do minus 2 plus 2. So I'm adding 0 in the exponent to steal two of them off of there, which is secant 2L minus 2X times secant squared X is what I'm doing, really. I'm stealing an exponent. And so if I have the integral of tan and X, I don't care what the tan is. If secant is even, I can write this as the integral of tan nx secant l squared times l minus 1 x times secant squared x dx. It's also even, so even though I've stolen two of them to make my differential, I can still get rid of all of the secants. This will now be equal to tan nx secant squared is tan squared plus one to the L minus one now times secant squared x dx. I can now make my substitution, which I knew I was going to do. This will be the integral of W to the N, W squared plus one to the L minus one times dW. And then we foil everything out, we're off to the races. In the third case, if tan is odd and secant mx is even, this is good. You can choose either case one or two. The fourth case is the danger case. So, and the danger case is even worse than the secant tan one or the cosecant cotan, which is identical. Just replace it with a negative. All the techniques are the same because we don't have the identities, first of all, like the sign identities. For the sign ones, we have these extra identities, at least. These extra identities for the even case. But now, and it's not quite the even case, but what's our bad case? So our danger case 
is what? If we have tan is odd and secant is even, we're good. If you have both of those things, you're good. If you have neither of them, it's bad. So when tan and x is even and secant is odd, this is bad especially in particular if you're just given the integral of tan 4x dx and say the integral of secant cubed x dx, which we can do. These ones we have to be very careful. My strategy is in theory anyways, it worked out in practice. This is horrible. You won't get it on an exam. It takes too long. It's too long. If I have the integral of tan 2kx and secant 2l plus 1x dx, then I can't use either of my techniques because when I try to steal, it won't work. I can't make either of the differentials. Neither differential works. So instead, what I'm going to do is because tan is even, I'm going to turn all the tans into secants. Using the Pythagorean identity. So this is equal to the integral of secant squared x minus 1 to the power k times secant mx dx. Then I use reduction of order. to compute the integral of secant. What does it matter like this? This is our overall strategy. I could do reduction of order for that one, but that one seems redundant. Let me do this one. So instead of recalling what the reduction of order formula is, let me do that for one of these integrals. Uh, Each integral, let's do one the integral of tan squared x dx to the integral of tan 4x dx. Say, we the integral of secant cubed x dx. We might want to do secant cubed first. I don't know which one. I'm just making up as we go. <clears throat> For the first one, this is my strategy. Technically, the secants aren't there. So when secant is odd or doesn't appear in there, that's a bad. So I have the integral of tan squared x dx. What should I do? What I'm going to do is my strategy is turn everything into secants. When I have a bad scenario where I don't have an odd tan or an even secant, that's the case that. That's how in my mind I solidify. If I have an odd tan, I'm good. If I have an even secant, I'm good. If I'm missing either of those, then I'm, if I'm missing both of those scenarios, then I'm screwed. What do I do? I turn tans into secants because that means in that case, either the tan will be even or it'll be odd. If it's odd, then I can get rid of it. If you look at these right next to each other even, What's good with the, or what's bad with this one? I have no secant that I can steal also. So you have to be careful when there's just tans alone. So this is why I'm going over some of its, the tan ones because when secant is missing entirely, this is an outlier case as well. We have, can't spend a million years on them, but be careful when you don't have an odd tan or an even secant. So what I would do with this one is turn it into 
secant squared x minus one dx by the Pythagorean identity. Now this is easy. This is 10x minus x plus c. So it gets better once I know this because I know the integral of secant squared. I don't know the integral of tan squared. For the second one, I have the integral of tan 4x dx. I write this as the integral of tan squared x. If it's even, I can still write it as even powers. And then I'm going to get the integral of secant squared x minus 1 dx. And then this one I'm not even going to finish because I'll show you where I'm going to use the horrible reduction of order. Oh, so, sorry, that should be squared. And then what do I get? This is the integral of secant 4x minus 2 secant squared x plus 1 dx. which is now going to be equal to the integral of secant 4x dx minus 2 times the integral of secant squared x dx plus the integral of dx. So this is equal to the integral of secant 4x dx minus 2 times 10x plus x plus c. This one I'm going to use reduction of order. Or integration by parts. I guess I don't have to do the integral secant cubed one. I'll leave that one. You can try that one. Let me try three. I'll do reduction of order. That was the classic one I was going to do. You have to solve for the uh, unknown integral. That's why I was like, I should probably put this one after the next one. So reduction of order, remember when we did this, it reduces it by two. So when I do reduction of order on secant four, it will turn into a secant squared again, and then you can just absorb this. I'll let you try it and see. For secant cubed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write it like this, the integral of secant x times secant squared x dx. So as long as you have at least two powers or higher, we know how to do the integral of just secant. We know how to do the integral of secant squared. We had substitution rule, and then we had, uh, this is one of our lexicons. Now we need to know secant cube or higher. How do we do this? If you have secant cube or higher, you steal two of these. This is gonna be your dv, and this is gonna be your u always. So u is gonna be secant x, du is gonna be secant x, tan x dx dv is going to be secant squared x dx, and so v is tan x. Every time I do a secant reduction of order, this is what I'm going to get. Then I have to call my integral i3, let's call it for integral of secant cubed, is equal to the integral of secant x times secant squared x dx, which is now going to be equal to what? u times v, secant x times tan x minus the integral of v du. So I'm going to get tan squared x times secant x dx in this case. I turn the tans cleverly into secants again, and I get my integral. This says i3 is equal to secant x tan x minus the integral of secant squared x minus 1 times secant x dx. And so this is equal to secant x tan x, my integral i3, minus the integral of secant cubed x dx, plus the integral of secant x dx. This is my integral i3, though, again. So 2i3, I bring it over to the other side is equal to the secant x tan x plus the integral of secant. The integral of secant is the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tan x. If you haven't memorized it, that one you might notice may come up more than once. It comes up fairly often. And then now solving for my appropriate integral i3 
is equal to one half secant x tan x plus one half the natural log of secant x plus tan x plus c. That is the reduction of order formula on cubed. If you do it for squared, notice it went from, it reduced my integral from a three to a one. This is why they call it reduction of order. We're reducing secant cubed is reduced to an integral of secant in this process, which is better. It reduces the order by two every time. If you do secant four, like this one I was saying, I'll leave it for you, you can try it. Then when you do this reduction of order, you're going to start off. So for integral of secant four, that's secant squared x times secant squared x dx. Or let's just call it star above. And what am I going to do? I'm going to let u equal secant squared x. So du is equal to 2 times secant squared x tan x dx. dv is equal to secant squared x dx. So v is tan x. That one's always going to be the same, this one. So you're always stealing two of them to get this guy. The other one will be some higher high, and higher even power of secant. So then this integral I4 is going to equal the integral of secant squared x times tan x this time minus the integral of V du. So two times the integral of V, which is tan. So then I'm going to have secant squared x tan squared x dx. I guess I am doing it, I can't leave it. So I4 now is equal to secant squared x tan x minus two times the integral. What do I do now? Turn the double tan into secant, secant squared x minus one dx. So I4 is equal to secant squared x tan x minus two times I4 plus two times the integral of secant squared x dx. I bring i4 to the other side, so I have three i4s now is equal to secant squared x tan x plus two times the integral of secant squared x dx. There's the reduction of order. That's the reduction that they call it. Because now I've taken the integral of secant 4x dx is now 1 over 3 n minus 1 times secant squared x tan x times or plus n minus 2 over n minus 1, 2 over 3 times the integral of secant 2x dx n minus 2. So we've reduced the order from 4 to 2. And now in this case, we're also done because you eventually want to get to secant squared or secant one, because then you're done. We know what we're doing because we know how to integrate secant squared. We know how to integrate secant one. So this is equal to one third secant squared x tan x plus two thirds. What is the integral of secant squared? Tan. Let's see. Dot, dot, dot. If you have a higher one, you just have to keep doing this over and over and over again with secants. To reduce till you get down to secant one. If you had a secant six, you'd have to reduce to secant four. Then you have to reduce the secant four to the secant squared, and then you're done. If you have secant five, you're gonna have secant cubed, then secant cubed to secant one, and then you're done. So this is gonna be the horrible scenario. So in theory, this is the case when you have even tans or and uh, odd secants. You want to use a reduction formula. Turn everything to secants is what I do, and then get rid of it. Again, if you have an odd tan, then you're in business because you can just do one of the first techniques. All right. My lecture notes has a few of them, but the cosecant scenario is exactly the same. It's just up to a negative. 
the other ones that we briefly talked about. I can't remember which one this is now, but we're going to do, I think it's four. We did substitution rule, then we did integration by parts, then we did trigonometric integrals, then we did trigonometric substitution. In many cases, this is also you can do hyperbolic substitution. I don't know if I'll get to it, but we can do hyperbolic just like we can do trigonometric. So what we have is basically we're going to have a square root of a t squared plus b t plus c. I can complete the square on this. So when we have a radical like this, we want to be able to integrate that. How do we integrate something like this is what we're asking. I know the T is there right now, but we're going to make it a variable into, we're going to make a substitution into dx eventually. So first what we do is complete the square. And clean it up. And that will give us the integral of square root of x squared, say, plus k squared dx, or we'll get the integral of the square root of x squared minus k squared dx, or we'll get the integral of the square root of k squared minus x squared dx once we complete the square. Those are the three cases we're going to get and clean everything up. If you want all the gory details, again, you can look at my lecture notes. But as a synopsis, once we complete the square and simplify everything, this is why, first of all, another reason why we want to complete the square. Usually when we start this strategy, they already give them like this. But the, the, the idea is a lot of the times nature will give us an integral where we have the square root of something. And then we need to know how to integrate this and get rid of it. So the first strategy is, well, we do know how to complete the square, and then we want to mimic these as Pythagorean identities. Now what we're going to see is if I have x squared plus k squared, this is the way that I do it. I don't know if they use a squared. Maybe they use a. I should use a like the book does. I use a in my guy. I see why. Ah, I'll leave it. So what I'm trying to see is that this is tens especially if I have one squared, let's leave it as a one squared. Then I have tan squared x plus one squared equals secant squared x. This is where I'm going with this guy. Let's color code them with the green one. I see x squared minus one squared. So what do I see with that? I see that sine squared x minus one squared is equal to co squared x. Or sorry, that's not the last one. These are the first two. Secant squared x minus one is tan squared from the same identity. And then the last one we want to use, this guy, when I have the constant minus, what I'm really looking at is I have one squared minus k squared or x squared. What I really want to see is one minus sine squared x is co squared x. Pythagorean identities is what we're looking at. So when I see these Pythagorean identities in my integral, that's what I'm looking for. When I see the square root of one of these things, I want to get rid of the square root. Why is that going to be good? Because then I can square root these guys and it will get rid of it. If I square root, then the square root of tan squared minus one is equal to 
the square root of secant squared x, which is the absolute value, but on the integral that we're doing this, you can just get rid of it. This is secant x, the square root of the other one, or sorry, tan squared plus one. The integral of secant squared x minus one is equal to the square root of tan squared x, which is tan x and the square root of one minus sine squared x is equal to the square root of cos x squared x, which is cos x. And do you see what happened when we do this? We've got a substitution now, which gets rid of the square root. And not only does it do that, it turns them into sines and secants and tans and coses, products of sines and cosines, essentially. Once we start division and stuff like that, also, then we're going to get cosecants and we're going to get crazier integrals. But what this tells us is we have category one. If we have the integral of the square root of x squared plus a squared, I don't remember which ones they do in the book, which order they do this in, but it doesn't really matter. I'll do it in the order that I just did. x squared plus a squared then your substitution is a reverse substitution. You're going to let x equal a tan theta. Then your differential is dx equals a secant squared theta d theta. What they don't tell you is you're actually going to have a rational function of that expression, which I won't get into right now. But if you just do that, then you'll have something involving that square root business, but it can get harder and there'll be more complicated or they'll have an X squared in on top of this, like I did on your first midterm, et cetera. They can add more to the expression. But then what else do I know? Then the square root of X squared plus A squared is equal to the square root of A squared times tan squared theta plus one, which is equal to a secant theta, which is good. In case two, if I have the integral of something with x squared minus a squared dx, then I'm gonna let x equal a secant theta then dx is going to be a secant theta tan theta d theta. Don't forget your differential. And then the square root of x squared minus a squared is equal to the square root of a squared minus secant squared theta minus one, which I can turn into tan, which is a tan theta. No more square root. And I have product of integrals of secants and tans. And then in the third case, we have the integral of square root of a squared minus x squared dx. If it's minus, I'm going to use substitution sine. You can use either one, but the derivative of sine is cos. There's no negative. So x is a sine theta. Then dx is a cos theta. And the square root of a squared minus x squared is equal to the square root of a squared sine, or sorry, one minus sine squared. which I put tan in or cos in there and I get a cos theta, no more square root. So this is the idea of trigonometric substitution. Yeah, that would be, the, and then I'll show you where the secant tan business comes from. And then what's the other one I should do? I should do the cat fishing one. I'm just picking ones to do this with. I don't have that to do. Okay, okay, okay. I like that one. I'll do this one. No, so yes, technically you're getting what you're saying is yes.
is technically absolute value. They deal with this in the consideration of sine and cosine in the trigonometric substitution. They go through this. If you look in the book or in my notes, I guess, slightly better in detail, they don't just willy nilly do that. But in each of the cases, the function that you're needing to do this to is positive in the region that they're going to do this in. So that between the certain interval, this is the same as being able to invert it. Cos is a one to one, and as they just restrict it to an interval where you can do this. So they've already taken care of this. You don't have to worry about doing plus or minus when you take the square root of co squared. Technically, it's absolute value, but they take the consideration of this. First of all, with all, all, with all intents and purposes, A is always positive, so you don't need it on the A because you're going to square it either to the A squared. The, A, the number A will always be positive, and then the cos or the sine or the uh, whichever one you're dealing with is positive in that region. Yeah, so they've, they've taken care of it in this, in this substitution. All right, so if there's no any other concerns, I'll do an example then. How do we do these ones? Well, let's do the catfish one. One you should already know. What's this one? That's why I like to catfish with this one because everyone mm, close, not arctan. That's one over one plus x squared, but good. It's related to it, arc sine. But speaking of arctan, arctan is this one. He's going to become extremely good. Yeah, he's going to be extremely useful in partial fraction decomposition, which we do on Thursday. But he's no good to us now. It's arc sine. So I can just write arc sine. Or if you don't see it, let's make a trigonometric substitution. It should work. Integrals are the unique up to a constant. It has to be the integral that I'm looking for. Whether I you just use all, oh, whether I was smart and was just like the derivative of arc sine is one over square root of one minus x squared. So this integral must be arc sine, then okay. If you don't see it and you use some other technique, which regardless of which technique you use, you better be able to get the same integral up to a constant. So what should I do with this? Well, this first one is, I see one minus, so that's going to be, I'm going to let x equal this sine theta. Then dx is going to be cos theta d theta. And the square root of one minus x squared is equal to the square root of one minus sine squared theta, which is the square root of co squared theta, which is, yes, technically absolute value, but we're just going to get rid of it and call it cos theta. And that should be one over. So what do I get? So this says the integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared dx is equal to, by my substitution, the integral of one over cos theta times my differential cos theta d theta. So this one, they cancel, which is just the integral of d theta, which is nice, theta plus c. Well, what was theta? Well, if sine theta equals x, this is if and only if theta equals arc sine x. Using the definition of inverse and my definition, this is where I got this from, x is sine theta. Don't forget at the end when you do these ones, you have to come back around. So what do I get? Arc sine x plus c. So trigonometric substitution will get it for us anyways, it better, but we didn't have to do all that work. This is what I'm saying, use your Rolodex. Say to yourself, should I know this as an integral from lexicon? Is this substitution rule? Is this integration by parts? Is this partial fraction decomposition? Is this a trigonometric integral? Is this trigonometric substitution? Is this hyperbolic substitution? Is this virus stress substitution? Is this partial fraction, you have to go through your Rolodex and say to yourself every time, which technique can I use to squash this integral? 
I could have squashed it at the beginning by just knowing that it was the lexicon. But if you don't see it, trigonometric substitution will get us out of it now either way. I don't know what example this is. Let's do example one for trigonometric integrals. So now you can see the relation between trigonometric substitution and trigonometric integrals. Once I make the trigonometric substitution, usually you're going to be left with products of sine and cosines. Uh, let's do. I just want to pick the ones. Well, I also have to pick there's certain ones where trigonometric substitution will work for partial fraction decomposition, but we haven't talked about partial fraction decomposition yet. So I won't do that yet. In my notes, I have, I was like, why have I already talked about that? Okay, let's just do the integral. Uh, One over x squared plus four to the three over two dx. This is similar to the partial fraction one. This is an irreducible quadratic raised to a power. The power now is three over two, which is also a radical. We have a square root in there, but you don't even have to have the radical in there if you don't want. So what are we going to do with this? I see plus. And so what I see immediately, you'll get faster at this as well, but I see tan squared plus four. So I know that X has to be two tan theta because then, well, first of all, my differential will be two secant squared theta d theta. And then X squared plus four is equal to four tan squared theta plus four, which is four tan squared theta plus one. And so x squared plus four to the three over two is equal to four tan squared theta plus one square root cubed, which is equal to two secant, I should have put this, I'm just showing you what we actually have in there. We have two times the square root of secant squared theta cubed, which is two secant theta cubed, which is eight secant cubed theta. Yeah. Which would be nice because it would just give us a cos. This one was a fairly easy one. I think I cooked this one up so it wasn't so bad. So what does that give us? The integral of one over tan, sorry, x squared plus four to the three over two dx. That becomes the integral of, what do I get first of all? On um, my dx was two secant squared theta d theta over the bottom, we worked out to be eight secant cubed theta. So this becomes one over four, the integral of cos theta d theta, which is not too bad. This is equal to one over four sine theta plus C. Now, how do we find sine theta is the question everybody forgets. It told us something though. We have tan theta, two tan theta is equal to X or tan theta is equal to X over two, which is opposite over adjacent. So this is X over two. If I have a, an angle there, hi kitty. Yeah. They're fighting. 
And so now what do I have to use? I use the Pythagorean identity to find that this guy is going to be what? Exactly the thing that I have, square root of x squared plus four. And what is sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this is equal to one over four times sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So x over the square root of x squared plus four. Wait, excuse me. Maybe I am allergic to the cat's square root of x squared plus four. Let's see. Just a second. So this is how we do, and we're pretty well done, right? Yeah. So I guess we have a couple of minutes I'll talk about. And when we do partial fraction decomposition. So on Thursday, I'll do a few more of these trigonometric substitution ones, but now you can see the idea is if I get these radicals, I complete the square on the radical, first of all, if it's not in the worst case scenario. And then I use these three identities. I'm looking at the Pythagorean identity is what I see in each case. And then I can get rid of the radical. And not only can I get rid of the radical, in most cases, I can turn it into a product of sine and cosine or secant and cosecant or secant and tan or cosecant and cotangent. Sometimes you get a mixture of both, depending on whether they put stuff over fractions, et cetera. But this is the idea. Once I make the substitution, I can get back. But the thing that you have to remember to do every time is you have to use a trigonometric right triangle and resolve for what the unknown sides are so that you can put everything in back into terms of X. So the one last thing that we're going to have is in partial fraction decomposition. As horrible integrals of form. Basically, once we do this, the integral of one or a constant eventually a over x squared plus a squared to the power n dx. This will be one of the irreducible quadratic to a power. The square is already completed. Raised to a power with no differential on the top. If I had an AX, I could make a differential. I could make a substitution and I could get myself out of there. But if there's no X on there, this will be the worst case scenario. We'll use trigonometric integrals for this. So instead, what we will use is X equals A tan theta to get us out. We'll use a trigonometric substitution and turn that integral into something that we can compute horrible powers of secant, et cetera, is what we'll get ourselves out of. All right, I have to figure out how to get a lunch to back to the school. I guess I'm driving back there or something, but I'll see you on Thursday. This is trigonometric substitution and trigonometric integrals. I'll see you Thursday. Yeah.